personally really like how on a new specification, iterative uh, equation questions are linked to other topics such as, you know, such as geometry, or in this case, or geometry and we're particularly working in radians and dealing with sectors. So we've got this diagram on the left and we're told that the ratio of areas OMB, that's the triangle, to MAB, that's the, the, the remaining part when we subtract the triangle from the sector, is two to three. And we have to try and get to this formula. Okay. So I'm going to say that the length, the radius of the sector is R, and we're told that M is the midpoint, so this length is going to be half R, and so is this length. So first up, area of the sector. That's actually just going to be a half R squared theta. That's a formula to learn. It comes from the fact that we've got theta over 2 pi. We're working in radians here. So that's the fraction of the circle that we have. And then we times by pi r squared. So the pi's cancel and we're left with half r squared theta. We're going to need that because I'm going to then subtract the triangle area to get the MAB area. So the triangle OMB is going to be a half AB sine C. So in this case, a half R times a half R times sine theta. So a quarter R squared sine theta. And therefore, the area of MAB is a half R squared theta minus a quarter r squared sine theta. So we've got the ratio is two to three. That means the MAB is actually going to be bigger. And we can turn it into an equation. It must be actually that three OMB is equal to two MAB. So three OMB. That's going to be three quarters r squared sine theta is equal to two MAB. So that's two times a half r squared theta. And there's the triangle. Remember, we're trying to get to this formula here. Theta equals 1.25 sine theta. I'm going to just expand this bracket first. And then divide through by r squared. Then get rid of the fraction, so times through by 4. So it's 3 sine theta is going to be 4 theta minus 2 sine theta. Therefore, 4 theta is going to be 5 sine theta. So theta is going to be 5 over 4 sine theta, or 1.25 sine theta. So a good little derivation here. We've derived this formula, which is, you know, there is going to be a specific angle that this is true for, but um, this is not solvable analytically. We can't solve this exactly. If we didn't have a theta, if we had a number, then it's fine. Or if we didn't have a sine theta, we just had a number, it's fine. But as soon as you get both, it's game over. So instead, we need a numerical method. And one such method is to use an iterative formula. In fact, we can construct this equation, which I'm not going to go into why, where that comes from, because it's going to be, we're going to be asked about it later on, in fact. But we can put in a starting value of theta 1 is 0 0.5 and generate new values, which will hopefully, or in this case, they definitely will, 
converge towards the solution. So it's theta equals 1.25 sine theta. Right, I'm gonna my starting value I'm gonna put as the get into the answer button. Make sure that you change your calculator to radians, and then off we go. 1.25 times sine of the answer. At the moment it's 0 0.5, that's gonna give me my first value, 0 0.5. 9, 9. I can just press equals again. Now it will put 0 0.599 in as the answer. It's going to be 705. It doesn't say whether to round it to three significant figures or anything, so I'm just writing down the first, first four digits. And then 0 0.810. So you can see it's not converging like straight to where we are starting point or anything. So that starting point wasn't necessarily a great one, but I suppose we didn't know what to do. We just knew that it was, well, we're told to use that one obviously, but we just knew it was greater than zero. So now to find the the actual root correct of three significant figures, you just got to keep, keep applying the iteration until it converges. And it takes a little bit of time. Just pre keep pressing equals. Okay, there we go. Let's see, yeah. Okay, I got it really well now. So 1.1311, which the three significant figure is going to be 1.13 radians. So the question is now asking us how the method works. Essentially, we've got y equals 1.25 sine theta. What is happening when we basically use this iterative formula? What is happening is that we have the line y equals x. That's essentially our, or y equals theta in this case. That's what we're plotting. So y equals theta and y equals 1.25 sine theta. And we want to find the point where they intersect. And so what we do is we put in a starting value of, of 0.5 in this case. Be sort of down here, and then we put it in to our function and get a new value out. And then that, so I'm just deciding, I think I probably should use a, we should use a ruler here. And a dotted or dashed line. Okay, so we put this in. And we get a new value out. In fact, that was our 0 0.599. And then that becomes our, our new value that we put in. So basically we go horizontally, and this is now this becomes our value of x. And you put that value of x in and you keep going up, and that gives you a new value of y. And then that new value of y, which is in this case is 0 0.705, you want to make the new value of x. So you go along to y equals x, and then that's where we are now at 0.7 and you just repeat the process so you can see it's going to take a little bit of time we started quite far from the root but we're going to get there it's quite hard at this point to show that what's going on but yeah I've just put a few little other dots there so that is that's what's expected I might just add on that this is 0 0.5 and maybe that there is 0.599, etc. Okay, well, I can't really fit much else on. And the type of convergence, this is called staircase convergence. Another type of convergence that you sometimes see is cobweb convergence when you sort of I'm making the cobweb go outwards, but actually we'd be going the opposite way and going towards a solution. So staircase convergence and cobweb convergence. All right, finally, we're asked to explain why a different iterative formula does not work. So it's going to be a similar sort of setup.
now we need to plot y equals the inverse sine function. It's worth just learning what this looks like. And it basically is like the sine function, but it sort of bends up the opposite way. There's a few different ways to remember what it looks like. And method one is to, you know, it's actually going to be the sine function, but then you reflect it in y equals x. So that's why it ends up going like that. The other way to think about it is that it's still like basically the point, say for the sine function, let's just look at the, the points for here from uh, 0 to pi over 2. So pi over 2 is when sine hits 1, and we've still got 0, 0. So when we have the inverse function, it's now going to be 1 mapping onto pi over 2. I think I've made it bend up a bit too quickly. I'm just going to, especially with that 0 0.8. Because that 0 0.8 is going to cause a stretch in the x direction by a factor of 1 over 0 0.8. So just, just for the sake of this diagram especially, let's make it look a bit like that. Okay, it's not to scale, to be fair. So this is going to be 1. All right, one way or the other, you need to know a bit about the, the inverse sine function, what it looks like. In fact, it um, it bends sort of down this way as well, but we're only looking at the positives. So that is my right-hand side, and then in the same way, we plot y equals x. It's going to hit somewhere there. Although I should again say, sorry, it's y equals theta. So what happens when we put in 0 0.5, for example, or you know some other value? Oh, I forgot about the dashed line. Sorry, I should have used that before. Okay, I'm going to do it in green now. So I'm going to go up here. But I'm actually going to hit the curve first, and I'm going to go that way. And it's going to take me away from the root, which is up here. And what we actually get is something called staircase divergence. It's going to end up going this way. It's going to end up being uh, negative probably. I don't know. Or, or maybe it's going to, actually, maybe it gives a solution of zero. But that's not the one we're interested in. So I suppose technically it's not staircase divergence. It does actually converge to zero. If you happen to start beyond the root, then you'd go all the way up to it. And it would, I'm kind of running out of space here, so I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to have to, let's imagine we start just beyond here, then you're going to hit that, and then it's going to go up, and then it's going to, then you are going to get staircase divergence. So you can mention that word if you want, but one of these two little pictures alongside the y equals inverse sine of 0 0.8 theta is what is expected. That's all that's needed. That just shows that we do not converge. Okay, quite a technical, tricky in places question. Hope you're happy with that.